friends, welcome back again to another episode of Tactical Enlightenment. And we are on day three of this never-ending battle. I say day three because this is day three of real life of my attempts here to rescue our main capital here in our campaign of Epicrotia. Uh, again, welcome back to Tactical Enlightenment. Our YouTube channel is dedicated to helping you get better at Banner Lord through the use of Fuel Command and Advanced Tactics. Uh, and you can see the situation here again. We are staring down 20... 400 or so Kazate that are sieging our castle here in Epicrotia. Um, it's been a long road just to get to this battle, uh, but it looks like I'm finally going to have a chance to, to defend our capital. I say finally uh, because leading up to this, I'll have to go back when I do the, do the editing. Uh, we've had like, I don't know, 10 battles. Obviously, we lost a battle at one point. We were captured. We were doing the rebuilding process. Yeah, we're going to lose Varagos Castle probably. Uh, but if we can defend our capital, at, and marching through this endless armies uh, of the enemy here, I will consider that a huge win. Um, we've got a pretty solid uh, army crew, but you can see a lot of my, my companion armies are extremely injured. 16 here, 5, 32 on that guy. Uh, we've got a huge amount of injuries, uh, but I also don't have the luxury of time. I'm going to wait just a little bit longer here to have some good daylight for this battle. Uh, and I think we're going to fight. We should be outnumbered, though, uh, like three to one. Uh, and that's obviously going to make this battle very difficult. Ah, uh, interesting, actually. I've never seen this before. I don't remember seeing this before, that the militia is part of the battle. So somehow, I guess they're brave enough to sally out and help us. Um, so we're not outnumbered quite as bad as I thought. Still, militia against Kazate is not a good recipe here. Uh, you can see them across the bridge. Now, I've got to get some captains assigned here to some of the some of the divisions, of course, with all these injuries. Um, we've had a lot of captains knocked unconscious, and for some reason they get amnesia or something and, and forget what division they were supposed to be in. So we'll stick the rest of these guys. Uh, yeah, we'll stick the rest of these guys in the Eighth Corps, and we won't waste too much of your time here. So the bridge, I could do a bridge defense against Kazate. Uh, they've got so many horse archers, though. So many total archers. You know what? Let's. Coming up with the plan here. I've, I've, I've got an idea, right? Like the Dumb and Dumber scene. I, wait, I think I had an idea. Yeah, yeah, actually, I do have an idea. So let's let's try to trap the Kazate here, right? Let's try to set up a situation where the horse archers come aggressively at us. We'll position well back of the bridge so that they have to cross the bridge to get to us. Uh, and then after they cross, we can spring the trap, right? We can have these infantry and archer divisions move up. Uh, we can have infantry divisions in front of both archer divisions in a shield wall. That'll help them absorb some of the initial onslaught. And then we will slide Cav, the second, third, and seventh division, in behind the enemy. Attack him with the probably the second Cav division, and then we will blockade the bridge with the third division. Uh, and what I'm hoping that'll do is prevent their retreat. Effectively, we will be able to bring all the force of all of our units to bear, including the infantry, <laughs> boring in on their horse archers. Uh, and hopefully slaughter their, all their forces. What is this gal? This must be their scout. She's roaring ahead of the rest of their troops. I don't know if she wants a duel or something like that, but we're taking this bitch out. What the fuck? Sometimes the AI does strange things. Well, you lost your horse, you lost your shield. Now you can catch a javelin in the back. That was strange. Artificial imbecility, as I like to call it. All right, so here comes their horse archers. I need to bait these guys, right? I want these guys to attack. I don't want them shooting arrows across the bridge. That's why our troops are positioned so far back. If they want to shoot at us, they're going to have to cross this bridge. If they do, they've fallen for our trap here. All right, so we're going to edge these guys forward. They're on the bridge now. There, they're coming. All right, this is going to work. So second, third cab, follow me. We'll have the seventh as well. That's horse archer division. So I'm going to attack with the second and seventh. I'll probably attack some too. And then we're going to physically send the third across. I'm going to... Yeah, they're all across, pretty much all across. I'm going to position the third on the other side of the bridge. And then what I'll be able to do is have them form a square and come to me as soon as the enemy's trying to retreat here. As soon as they've had enough, we open fire here. The arrows are rocketing through. They'll probably get a few kills. They got a couple, three kills. But when they try to retreat, these guys are going to have a very nasty surprise for them. They're going to find that the, their fire exit is... Their emergency exit door here is closed. 
All right, look at these guys. They're bottled up now. In come behind them, our second calf. Oops, I'm getting slashed myself. But here comes our infantry, too. Our archers are raining death on these guys now. Uh, the screen is full of green because horse archers that can't move are called dead archers. These guys are fucked. They're trying to fight back. <laughs> now they're getting hit with fucking javelins and throwing weapons. The infantry launches into battle. That's fucking beautiful. And 170, 180 horse archers become 20. They get butchered. All right, now we're going to set up our archers here on the wings here. I'm not sure if the enemy's going to fight a standard bridge battle or not. But, of course, now we have the bridge bottled up. Looks like our infantry is putting down the last of their horse archers. I think we might be able to drive around behind the enemy. I've got the second cab following me here. The enemy's sort of positioning over there. If I can drive troops around behind them here while they're held up at the bridge, we might be able to pound their archers uh, and give them a little hammer and anvil action here with our cab division. I don't do this very often, uh, but I'm feeling especially frisky in this battle. This battle's been a long time coming. I've been kind of ruminating about how to destroy the Kazate here. Obviously, we're outnumbered and outgunned fighting with militia, but uh, we're going to use our brains here and butcher the enemy. We're getting great death spam. That's probably because we killed a lot of their archers, right? A lot of their horse archers, and now their cav is probably jammed up on the bridge. Uh, without horse archers, obviously, Kazade is a much weaker kingdom. All right, so here we go. We're going to pin them down with infantry at the front. They've got a big line of archers at the back. If I can get these guys to to route, if I can get them to reform, not route, they're, gonna, they're not going to route yet, but if I can get these guys to reform, I think we can slam them with this cav division and cause panic within their ranks. Here comes my cav line. It's only like 20 guys, but it's still going to be right up their ass and probably unexpected by the enemy. Cav launches in behind him. Now we're going to drag these guys around. I'm basically going to prevent their infantry from getting to our cav, and we're just going to circle around and try to trample their archers. We're using the, the horse archer tactics against the Kazate here. Look at they're starting to scatter. They're being pounded by archers. And we're going to suffer some losses here. Of course, their, our cav is intermingled in, with their infantry. They still have some horse archers, obviously. They got a big tranche of them over here. In fact, let's attack these guys next. I think the enemy is close to reforming. Of course, they're going to get reinforcements close to this side, but I think we'll be able to set up a nice defensive arc over here with archers, with the infantry. Taking a lot of arrows to the face. They must still have cons guards here. I see cons guards, in fact. Unfortunately, my pole arm is a verified Kazate killing machine. Okay, so their infantry and archer lines have broken up here. We're going to steamroll right through these guys before they can reform. Infantry's charging through their infantry. I've got my cab and 8th eighth, eighth Corps here charging through their reforming infantry. If we can kill half of these guys, they won't even be able to uh, join their other forces over here, and we'll have yet another advantage in numbers, or at least equal numbers. They've still got a huge amount of horse archers. Uh, which is always the case. Even though we trapped and destroyed most of their four, first horse archers, they got, you know, they got probably half half a typical Kazate army is horse archers. These guys are all dark hands. So we still got our work cut out for us in this battle. Let's get our, infantry, our archers moved up here. It's clear at this stage that we're going to have some room to operate. Uh, stick the fifth archers here on the right. I'm trying to spread them out. Fifth archers with the skirmishers in front of them, and then on the side here we will we will have our our crossbow division. Their units are kind of spread out. They've got some units trying to position towards us, and then they've got this unit of infantry. It looks like towards the back of their force. Anytime the enemy is spread out, right, take advantage of it. My javelin skills need some work. I'm getting a little rusty again. They've still got a lot of elite archers. I'm still killing tier 5 archers. Let me just stick to my pole arm. When you can't throw javelins well, stick to your pole arm. These horse archers are doing a number on us over here. I almost always try to prioritize their horse archers. Even if you can just take them off their horses, right? These guys become much easier to kill. It 
looks like I've positioned my archers wrong here. I wanted the fourth on this left flank. Uh, I think it's actually better that I waited because we wanted to thin out these horse archers first before we make this movement. Once we do that, though, we'll have flanking archers on the enemy uh, and, of course, have reduced their horse archers considerably. We'll be able then to drive in on that main enemy force. 240. God, they have almost 450 guys there still. Uh, you, just, you just fucking killed one of my companions, you mother effer. Avenged. Their troops are really spread out. They've got infantry sort of quasi charging, and their archers are basically in engage or advance mode. You can see them moving up, but they're they're really spread out. Trying to get good angles for our archers here. Alright, the sixth line is pouring in strong. This is our best infantry line. They've got the strength. They're making good ground on the archers here. And of course, once they close the distance on these archers, it's going to be curtains, right? A bunch of skirmishers and uh, high level shock troops are just going to rip right through these archers. Okay, the enemy's already getting another wave. That's a sign that we need to attack even more aggressively. Uh, when the enemy gets a wave like that, uh, a wave of reinforcements, they're very likely at some point to reform with their troops, cut them off before they can do that, right? Anticipate where the puck is going to be. We're going to skate to it and score a fucking a goal here. The archers now are finally starting to rake these guys with broadsides. It took a while for me to get the positioning right, but now they're there. All right, we're getting reinforcements here too. We're going to move up aggressively. I'm going to try to jam the enemy up at the bridge. These archers are already positioned well. That's the fourth. I've got the cav division still following me. The cav division of, of two guys. We've got eight guys in the second I can use as a wall. And I've got infantry reinforcements coming. We will start getting militia in this battle if we suffer too many losses. And the battle could turn ugly in a hurry if we start sending guys in that are militia. I mean, just weak little shields and sad, sad little fucking weapons. In fact, I already see scrub troops. Look at these fucking scrubby archers. There's guys in fucking Halloween costumes on. Looks like they're wearing some pathetic fucking sheet from a Walmart costume. Well, this is the stage of the battle we're in. A lot of times in our campaign, we don't have to do this. We don't have to, to rely on our our tier two and tier three troops, but in this war of attrition here, to save our capital, uh, we are, look at this guy's just being chased to the death, killed. Uh, you know, in this battle here, we, we will, however we have to win, we will win. If I've got to send in, you know, our 15 year old children to win this battle, that's, that's, that's what we'll do. Obviously that's not an actual option. But you understand what I mean here. The, the, our capital, with all of our top gear, this has all of our best equipment at it. This is there's huge amounts of food stocks here, uh, horses. We have to save our capital, otherwise this campaign is over. We're gonna wade in here behind a line of shields, and we're gonna try to bore into this enemy force here. I don't have a lot of health yet, but again, the RTS mod gives me a little bit more courage. Enemy starting to peel back. I'd run too if some guy was chopping people apart with an axe. There's another line of reinforcements coming to the other side of the bridge. Looks like the enemy's starting to try to reform towards the bridge. Well, we're going to cut that off. I've got an archer core here. The fourth is here. I can send infantry in to bottle it up, right? We're going to cork this bottle. And then we're going to consume the contents with violence. They've got a bunch of weak horse archers kind of running through here, but that does not concern me. We we'll jump on a horse, and we can we can remove the honor of a few of these horse archers. Some of their troops look like they're routing. Either they're repositioning way over to our, our right flank, or they're routing. Yeah, these guys are definitely routing. We're going to kill as many of these guys as we can. We're basically going to farm these guys. I've got all these recruits. I've got all these low-level archers. These guys need kills to level up. Uh, we're going to need... 
experienced uh, warriors, no doubt there's more armies already forming now to come after us. Uh, you know, if you don't know, if for some reason this is your first episode you're watching our channel, we're fighting the entire map. It's a little self-imposed uh, death death match against the whole map. Uh, our kingdom is now small. It was pretty decent, pretty big actually when I started this challenge, uh, but now we're down to two or three cities and a couple of three castles. Um, so it's a it's a difficult campaign by by choice, right? This is effectively a contrived campaign, uh, but we're having a fun time here, trying to trying to fight back these enemy hordes uh, with nothing but ingenuity and grit. And the bottom line here is our capital is saved. There's a huge militia force here. Uh, unfortunately, we lost some militia in this battle and before this battle, uh, but they'll recover quickly. My, my capital has an enormous amount of prosperity. Uh, I've been food stocking it for a long time. Something I've talked about in other episodes, but what you can effectively do is overfeed the population. Uh, and besides everybody getting obese, what the effect of that is uh, the population soars, the, the, what's the prosperity bar soars, and with that, there's more reinforcements coming out. I don't think these guys are going to amount to anything. Actually, I hope they charge because all of our low-level troops can gain some experience. Please come right at us. Look at all our low-level level puzzles bringing up their little weak, weak shields. Attack, boys. Uh, but ultimately, the prosperity of our capital is far beyond what you would typically see in Vanilla Bannerlord, and, and we've, we've effectively created that manually by dumping food on it. Look at all these low-level archer peasants. Get these guys some experience, right? They can get they can get some fairly uh, low risk kills here as the enemy charges us with low level infantry. This is actually kind of optimal for the for the leveling of these troops. We're probably not going to lose very many, and the enemy's bottled up here for our low level archers to basically farm some exp. Uh, so what we did, of course, is we just saved food. We saved a lot of food. Uh, and ultimately, as it became clear that I needed the capital, that I needed a home base to support our army, to put all our best gear, uh, and to sort of uh, use as a safe house against these enemy assaults, uh, you know, we now have this capital overstocked with food. Prosperity goes way up. Look at all the guys just going crazy. They're loving it. My troops are like, yeah, this is shit's easy. We were getting routed until you guys got here. Uh, but that, all that food eventually increased the prosperity. Right now you need a lot of food to feed a, a, a highly prosperous city. But we have something like 40 or 50,000 food here, uh, which is, you know, that's accumulated over many years of gameplay. Uh, you're not going to, you're not, you're not going to have that in the first five or ten years of gameplay. But if you play a long campaign, uh, in my case the campaign's almost seven years, you know, just non-stop fighting, you will also be able to build similarly sort of this this capital city uh, and because of that we have a huge militia there it generates a massive amount of income i think at this stage we're actually making several thousand gold every day uh, just because we have so many profitable either cities or castles and we have a small garrison now right i think the garrison here is like a hundred uh, just because of losses and we've had to steal from them this is strange my troops are all cheering and yet there's still enemy forces like coming at us here so half the guys are like over there cheering, putting their hands up in the air like they're doing jumping jacks, and the other guys here are getting attacked by the enemy. Uh, we don't need to suffer a lot of losses, a lot of losses at the end of this, but this also might be some more good farmed EXP for our characters. So I'm gonna play this out. I think I could probably just uh, hit the tab button or whatever, and it would say, you know, you've won this battle. Congrats! But we're gonna farm these guys to the max. These insolent fucking Kazate peasants trying to take over our capital. Uh, we're gonna build a graveyard out here for them. As a reminder, yeah, these guys are all cut off. They're, tr they're trying to retreat and they're, just, they're getting peasant beat down. That's sweet. Well, it was messy and I'll have to go back and look. When I, when I edit this, I'll try to tally up how many fucking forces we defeated to finally defend our capital here. Uh, th that was, I, I've never had an experience like that in Bannerlord. That, that seemed like it was like seven or eight different armies, and that might have been over 10,000 troops uh, that just attacked us in the last week, week and a half. 
Uh, it's, it's been three three days of, of actual play, uh, but that was an absolutely non-stop uh, assault by the enemy on our capital there. And of course, that's probably going to continue, right? We're fighting the whole map. If you think about it, we're down to you know two or three cities and two or three castles. Well, if there's eight enemies, uh, that means that you have more than one enemy attacking each castle, right? Each city. Uh, it's simply they just simply don't have enough targets to send their armies to attack, right? So this is going to continue. It's going to continue to get harder, uh, but that's the way we like it here, right? Um, we oh, we got some nice loot here, a couple of legendary pieces. Uh, at this stage, it doesn't really matter. We've got super elite gear, uh, but we'll take it. Uh, we've got a few new characters that we can drop that on. Uh, but the struggle continues here. You can see Epicrocia has, I don't know if that's ominous, it has 666 people there. We're almost certainly going to lose Varigo's castle. I can't even begin to head that direction. The garrison is starved there. That sucks. Uh, the one benefit is I might be able to go down there and rescue those troops if they're taken prisoner. Uh, I got to ransom a few characters here. They wanted a ton of gold for that character. Uh, but we sold your on here. This is... Uh, Again, our deathmatch campaign is in, you can see, it's it's uh, 70 years in, 1151 into the game, right? Uh, so our, our people here are starving, uh, and just like uh, all the, the Roman demagogues and, and other leaders throughout history, what we're going to do when the people are unhappy, right? We're going to send them a stimulus check here. <laughs> we're going to give them some olives, some beer, some fish, all this good stuff. We'll have a couple arenas, execute some of our rivals, uh, and the people will be you know, happy as pigs and shit, right? Everybody gets to eat. Uh, they're no longer starving. Their, their beneficent Jarl here rescues them from the savage Kazate. See, we're just gonna dump all this on the city uh, and all live happily ever after. Or we're gonna be besieged to the point where we lose uh, and the campaign will be over. Uh, but either way, we're gonna have a lot of fun doing it. Um, I hope yeah, Cranorog's in, in trouble too. I might be able to make it up there. I hope those watching though have enjoyed. Uh, it's certainly been enjoyable to play. Uh, Vanilla Bannerlord can be kind of easy once you start to snowball the game, but this has been uh, both gruelingly difficult and, and a lot of fun. It's forced me to, to create tactics uh, that I ha you know, basically came up with from scratch to deal with huge enemy forces or horse archers, uh, and it's been a lot of fun. So, so thanks for joining me on this adventure. Uh, there will be more to come, I'm sure, friends. Uh, and I will see you fellas next time.